Today what we're going to do is select the grain for my baby's crib. So in starting any project, you want to lay out your project pieces to kind of optimize your material, but also optimize how it looks. So specifically today what I'm going to cut out of this board is the legs. And when you're making legs, I'm going to put some curves and stuff into them so you want nice even grain on all sides so it all flows through properly. So I'm going to lay this out so it has rift sawn grain. And by rift sawn grain, I'll show you what I mean here on a, on a bit of a close. So here's the cut board and you can kind of see how the grain goes at an angle like that here. And you can see how there's quite a bit browner here. Probably you can see it a little bit better on this piece of pine. So you see these lines going through here, those are the growth rings of the tree. And what happens when you have the lines going at an angle like this, when you cut out a square blank, you have straight grain going on all four sides. Versus if you have more vertical grain, you have straight lines on one side, and then you have more open pattern or cathedrals on this face here which doesn't look quite as consistent, doesn't look quite as nice for like. So the goal is to get this diagonal or rifts on grain throughout the whole set of legs. After laying out all your parts, then the real work of milling your lumber flat and square starts. I started by roughing out my blanks. The smaller the piece you take through the milling process, the less waste you'll have at the end of the day. I usually try to mill up an extra blank or two in case I make a mistake, and to use as a test piece. This also makes sure that I negate the waste savings by milling smaller pieces. I am a woodworker because I want to get rid of trees, not because wood is beautiful. Here we have the legs, you can kind of see it's a nice straight grain. Next thing we do is we're going to cut them to the exact length we need. Then they're ready to cut the joiner again. As I said before, oftentimes exact dimensions aren't as important as consistent dimensions. Hence the use of a stop block instead of measuring everything. So here we got some legs, and we put rails in between, and then slats go through here to complete the baby prism. And then it's almost done already, it's amazing. I'm using a Festool domino to connect everything, so layout is very important. There are other ways of doing this, but no visible hardware was an important part of my design. Also, with COVID restrictions, no one is allowed in my shop. So how else am I going to show off my domino and saw stop if I don't do it on a YouTube video? You'll also notice me label each joint. This is important for me to have something to ignore later. And that's literally how fast the domino is. Here, I'm laying out the side panel rails and cutting them out of the rough stock. Then it's back through the milling machines once again.
and cross cutting to length again. A stop block helps me keep everything nice and consistent in length. Then comes a quick dry fit to ensure everything is the right size and to confirm some other measurements. Now comes the tedious job of making way too many crib slats. I swap my combo blade for a dedicated rip blade, and that makes things just a little bit easier. I made a few test cuts, then test fitted the slats to make sure it was a nice and snug fit, then ripped about a million of them. Quarter inch round over matches the 10 millimeter domino cutter perfectly. On the router table I used feather boards to keep a consistent pressure on the slats. This makes sure that everything is nice and even. The process of making and sanding the slats only sucked away a couple of decades of my life. I've just sucked one year of your life away. Using the handy dandy auto spacing tool in SketchUp I figured out the spacing for all the slats and laid them out. I decided once again to use the domino on its wide setting to plunge all of the mortises. And this is a quick demo of how that process went. Isn't the domino awesome? We're getting closer to final assembly. The last step before glue up is to route out the mortises for the concealed panel connectors. Here I use some careful layout and stop locks on the router table to make sure all the mortises are as consistent as possible. I got these connectors from the wonderful Canadian company of Lee Valley, largely because they're the only things that I could find that would allow me to keep no visible hardware in the crib. Time to start shaping the legs. Shaping the legs involved careful layout and then liberal use of the draw knife, spoke shave, and sandpaper. If you are interested in how I made this super simple spoke shave, check out this video. So, here's a case of sometimes things just don't go the way you want them to go. Rehearse the glue up, put everything in clamps, blah blah blah, everything fits. Put the glue on, using high glue so I have extra time and doesn't swell the wood quite as much, helps kind of lubricate the joints. Get everything kind of squared up, put together, 
And then when it comes time to park together, I didn't quite get this set right. So not a big deal. I figure I could tap it in. But these are all nice and tight. And as a consequence, the glue through here is set up and I can't get it shut. So now it's a little bit too big. Doesn't matter how hard you plan, sometimes crap hits the fan and you gotta do a workaround. Anyway, so what I'm gonna end up doing is I think I'll just pare down these tenons a little bit so this will be a little bit sloppier, but it's side grain to side grain. I think there's gonna be plenty of structure anyway. Ah, but annoying nonetheless. Get on with this. I ended up taking about an eighth of an inch off of each slip tenon. I broke all the edges with a block plane, then started gluing stuff up. After everything was glued up, I checked for square and then went and cried myself to sleep. Now we're almost ready for the first time it all goes together. It was a definite fingers crossed moment because I hadn't put anything together yet. Time to assemble the crib. That's the first time, so we'll see how it goes. The baby will be imprisoned. Then, after days and days and days of sanding, it was time for finish. I used Osmo Top Oil as my finish because it's food safe. Babies, as some of you may know, have a tendency to chew on things. Hey, if you've made it this far, why not subscribe? And thanks for watching. Go ahead and leave a comment down below if you want to see anything or more detail on anything that I showed in the video, and catch you on the next one.